This is Scott Flint, author of Waking the Tiger Within, How to Be Safe from Crime. And I'm here to go over the self-defense mindset, which is more critical and more important than any self-defense technique or kata, more beneficial than sparring training. It's the attitude or the way we think in terms of self-defense and also deals with how we can be more mentally prepared for an attack. And these are things that even years after martial art training, some of the techniques and katas may have faded from your memory, but these attitudes and ways of thinking will stay with you and help you to be able to defend yourself. And they're pretty simple. They're something that you can think about and practice on a daily basis, and then it becomes part of you. And then if you ever had to deal with an attack, you're going to do a lot better. The first is the circle of fear, which talks about keeping an attacker at a certain distance and also talks about how, it can how to set your triggers for being ready to, to defend yourself. So the meaning of the circle of fear, the name the circle of fear is a two-edged sword term, fear for both people. You experience temporary fear as the attacker moves closer, keying your self-defense action. Your assailant experiences great fear as you suddenly unexpectedly strike out. Visualize an imaginary circle around you six feet from you in all directions. Never let a person of danger cross the six-foot distance. At six feet, you have enough time to react to a violent attack any closer, and your chances of being able to react are very low. At three feet or less, you won't have time to react. You must believe in it or you won't use it. Under heavy stress, your brain will not allow you to use defense concepts that you don't believe in. Try out the circle of fear. Have a friend stand at six feet away from you and then without warning, lunge towards you in an attempt to tap your head lightly with their finger. Both of you should start with your hands at your sides. You should be able to easily block their arm out of the way before they're able to tap your head. And that shows you that at six feet, you'll be able to react to almost any attack situation and be able to block or get out of the way or counterattack. At three feet, someone gets hit. Now you have your friends stand at a three, three feet away from you, both of you keeping your hands at your sides. Have your friends suddenly, without warning, tap your head lightly with their finger and try hard to knock their hand away. Now it'll be your turn to try the same thing. And what you find is at three feet, they'll be able to tap you, you'll be able to tap them, and you just can't react in time. So if someone were to sucker punch you at that distance, you'll probably get hit. At three feet, you can't stop the strike. I've done this experiment with thousands of my students, even people with black belt reaction levels, and no one has ever been able to strike, to stop the strike that I threw at the three foot range. When people have struck at me, I haven't been able to stop it either. So I'm a believer. You have to vis viscerally experience this to make it part of your natural self-defense ability. It can't be conceptual. It has to be something that you've experienced and that you believe in, and then you'll understand why it's important not to let an attacker get that close. The circle of fear is your trigger. You must develop a mental trigger that allows you to use your defensive training. When a dangerous person crosses the six-foot mark, you must react. That line represents your trigger to action. Action could be for you to create that six-foot buffer again by moving back, and action could be for you to strike out before they're able to hurt you. The critical thing is that you must act. Do you strike everyone who enters a circle of fear? No. In your life, thousands of people will be closer than the six-foot circle. Your family, friends, and loved ones, even strangers will be within that circle, should not let who should you not let within the circle? When you know the person is a threat, you must learn two critical concepts to help you with that. The color code and trusting your gut instinct. These concepts will let you understand when there is a real threat. So the color code consists of these four colors, white, yellow, orange, and red. And this comes from Colonel Jeff Cooper from Gunsight Institute. And it helps us to be ready to deal with a threat by getting us more and more prepared before the threat gets worse. 
So color code white is unaware asleep. You'll probably die if you're attacked unless your opponent really is inept. In white, the only thing that would keep would get you to fight is the sight of your own blood, only when you realize that you've got a problem. 90% of people are in white most of their lives. It attracts trouble. Don't ever let yourself be caught in white. No matter how safe you are, you think you are, stay aware. Try to always be in the next level, which is color code yellow. Yellow is generally alert. You know that you could be attacked, that it really could happen to you, and that you're not exempt. You're aware of what is happening around you. You use your senses fully. You're living in the present and you're focused on your personal safety. Most of your life should be spent in color code yellow, especially when you travel to areas that you're not familiar with. You will repel attackers while in yellow. Try to be in it most of your life. Color code orange would be when you have a specific alert, you have a possible target. There's a particular situation that's drawing your attention and you're preparing your battle plan. In orange, you start to formulate a plan. Well, if this person continues in a threatening manner, I'm going to do A, B, or C. And A could be for you to run, could be to strike, could be to create that bigger buffer zone, but you've already seen the attack about to happen and you're getting yourself ready. The important thing of orange is that you've made your decision to take action and you've hung it on a hook, meaning that it is done. While being attacked, you won't have to have a conference with yourself on whether or not to fight back. The decision will have already been made and you will be able to fully concentrate on the matter at hand, which is stopping the fight. While in orange, the potential attack situation, does if it does not materialize, you can always switch back to yellow. But you're in a position where you can make that decision and you're not being caught off guard. Color code red would be when you carry out the decision that you made in orange. It's the fight mode. The decision and course of action has already been made and the execution of your technique will be not hindered by indecision. You won't be saying, I can't believe this is really happening. You will not have been surprised. You will have seen the attacker moving towards you in yellow and you have established your plan in orange and then in red you may have to carry out that plan if the attack continues but you'll see it early. Try to find yourself practicing this once a day. Soon your ability to shift from yellow to orange will become effortless. You can't really practice shifting to red without it involving fighting but you can imagine a shift to red by visualizing fighting back in your mind. Once again you are conditioning your mind to be ready to fight back. You are rehearsing for a performance that could determine whether you live or die. Make sure that you know your part. Over the years, we've had many favorable reports from our students on how well the color code works, and many have said it has saved their lives. Just knowing and understanding the color code is not enough to make it an effective self-defense tool. You must also practice it often. This is actually simple to do. Just by walking down the street, you can practice shifting out of yellow and going to orange. Say to yourself, if that guy walking behind me picks up his pace and makes a move toward me, I'm going to throw him through the store window. Most likely the guy walking behind you is not a problem and when you're safe, you'll be able to shift back to yellow. Had he been a real problem, you would have been ready for action. Practice this thinking of ways to stop or avoid the potential attacks. The next section is mental conditioning for combat, which involves saying these four things to yourself every day. It might happen to me, it might happen today, I know what to do, and I'm going to do it. This is also from Colonel Jeff Cooper. And it might happen to me talks about the idea that you're not exempt, that someone actually could attack you. It might happen today puts it in a time context that it might actually happen. It's really not hard to stop an attack once you make the decision to do so. And I'm going to do it means that you will fight back. No one has a right to hurt you. And you should take action to stop the attack. Trusting your gut instinct. Learn to trust your gut feeling. It might save your life. Think of the many times throughout your life when you have experienced a strange feeling that turned out to be an early warning of danger. Use your early warning radar. Radar. Did you take heed of that warning and avoid the impending danger, or did you ignore your built-in early warning radar and walk right into harm's way? 
the funny feeling in the pit of your stomach or the feeling of the hairs on the back of your neck standing on end are ways of your body telling you that something is very wrong. Any veteran police officer or soldier who's seen combat can tell you that they've experienced this and it was a way for them to know that something bad was about to happen. Your subconscious, which operates about 10 times faster than your conscious mind, has picked up on signals of danger that your conscious mind has not yet processed. Many times the immediate threat has, subs has subsided. You realize that it was that you realize what it was that caused your subconscious to go into the fight mode. After thinking about it, you start to understand that while you were talking to a stranger and had that gut feeling that something was wrong, you had seen out of the corner of your eye that there was a second person moving towards you. And that is what triggered your gut feeling, which is your body ramping up to be ready for fight or flight. At the time, it was only a flash of movement from that second person to your right, but in hindsight, you realize that <clears throat> it was an accomplice of the stranger trying to hide from your view behind a car. Because you trusted your gut feeling, you took defensive action and survived. Had you ignored that uneasy feeling, you would not have been able to see the second person coming at you with a tire iron, and you would have got hit. So learning to trust it is really critical, and it's accurate about 90% of the time. Nine times out of ten times, it works. Here's how it works. There's nothing magical about the sixth sense. It's simply your body's first reaction to adrenaline entering your bloodstream. As your digestive system is being shut down to allow more blood to flow to your muscles, you get a queasy feeling in your stomach. Your body is getting a shot of adrenaline because your brain has determined that you're in danger. It's not paranoia. It's an actual threat that has been picked up. It's real. And you should pay attention to it, deadly attention to it, so that you are not caught off guard. If you're sure you've got a problem, look for the fastest way out. If you're unable to tell what caused the gut feeling of danger, don't think that you're in the clear. <clears throat> the problem may still exist, so let yourself shift back to yellow, but stay sharp. Be prepared to shift to orange should any danger present itself. The main thing is to not discount the feeling, but to embrace it and try to figure out what's happening so you can take defensive action and not get hurt. Steps to take when you get the gut feeling. Number one, move. Don't wonder why, just move. If you're armed, make sure your weapon is ready to be used, preferably in your hand. Take a 360 degree look around you. <clears throat> You need to shift to a higher state of awareness from yellow to orange. This is where you identify a possible threat. Make your plan of what action you'll take if that person moves towards you. <clears throat> Stay aware. There could be multiple attackers. It's been part of you since you were born. You can see the effects of this instinctual gut feeling clearly in an infant child. If an adult doesn't like kids and picks up a baby, the baby will cry. If the adult who picks up the baby likes kids, the baby will smile. No matter what the adult's doing, <clears throat> the baby will pick up on their true intention and respond to it. We as adults have the same instinctual ability to sense danger, but we must learn to trust it. We must practice using it so that it becomes second nature. Just as a yawn is a signal that you're tired and a sneeze is a sign of an impending cold, your gut feeling is a life-saving indicator that you're in serious danger and to be prepared to take appropriate steps to defend yourself. Learn to embrace this God-given self-defense instinct. Never doubt it. Use it. Stay safe. Stay alive. Hope this has been helpful to you and that you can use these to keep yourself safer. There's more information available from the book Waking the Tiger Within, which is available at Amazon.com. Thanks so much for watching.